important thing is that without the cross, there can be no crown. Without the cross, there can be no crown. You have to take up your cross before you can get the crown. Um, sacrifice is about giving up something of value in order to gain something of greater value to you. You give up something of value to gain something of greater value to you. And that is in different areas. Sacrifice can be in the area of material things. Sacrifice can be in the area of your time. Sacrifice can be in the area of what you refuse to take, like you said. Sacrifice can be something you are offered, but you know that it will sabotage your tomorrow. Even though, in quote, it feels like you need it now. But you decide to put it aside, lay it down. Why? So that you can obtain your tomorrow. The Bible says concerning Jesus in Hebrews chapter 12, for the joy that was set ahead of him, he endured the cross and it despised the shame. Why? Because of the joy that was set ahead of him. Hallelujah. If you are a sports person, you understand this very well. I mean, there are times, you know, you, would, you don't have a choice but to practice, to work out, even when your body doesn't feel like. Why? Because you are trying to keep in shape, in form, so that you can win the tournament. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So when you see sportsmen jogging in winter, very early in the morning, when people are co all covered up, shivering and all that, it's not because they just want to punish their body. Those are the sacrifices they have to make in order to win the medal tomorrow. Give me First Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 24. New Living Translation. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Tell your neighbor, run to win. Okay, so this is an admonition. Say, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. The but Paul is saying, you run to win. Don't bother who else doesn't get the prize. not your business. You focus on one thing. Run to win. Run to be the one who gets the prize. But in getting the prize, you have to pay the price. Next verse, please. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. They are disciplined with their routine. With their training. They are disciplined. They are hard on their bodies. They are hard on themselves. They don't eat anyhow. They don't eat what they may love to eat. Just to keep in shape. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. They push themselves sometimes beyond human capacity to endure just to keep in form. I watched a video clip and I saw Osime um, walking out. And I said, no wonder. Some tough, weird kind of workout. Weird kind of workout. So when you see him there on the field and he's sprinting with the ball, um, he's not by luck. No. No, he paid the price. He paid the price. There is a price they have to pay behind the scene. And all you are seeing is the glory, but there is a story behind it. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Next verse. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. In other words, I'm not fooling around. Everything I'm doing aligns with where I'm going to. I'm that disciplined. I don't get myself involved in frivolities. I don't shadow box. I'm focused. And I trim my activities. Why do I have to trim my activities? Because there's something in view. I have a goal. There's something I'm working towards. So I sacrifice every other thing that doesn't align with where God is calling me to, with what I'm pursuing. Those are sacrifices you have to make to get to your goal or to get to your destination. 
Next verse. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself will be disqualified. In other words, if you don't discipline yourself, if you don't make the required sacrifice, you will be disqualified. Life has different ways of disqualifying people who don't make the sacrifice. For instance, if you don't read when you ought to read and you play around and you have an exam, maybe a professional exam, in view and you play around, you, will, you go to shop, right, move from one cinema hall to another cinema hall, an ATC, when you get to the exam hall, life will disqualify you. It's as simple as that. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. That's also applicable spiritually. When you watch a movie all day and all night, and then you don't get to pray, your quiet time is stale. There's not really nothing happening there. The Bible says in the book of um, Leviticus chapter 6, I believe, it said the fire must not go down on the altar, but your own fire has gone down and has stayed down for so long. Now, what happens is when the enemy comes within that season, you won't have the stamina to resist or to defend yourself successfully. Why? You were playing around when you should be building up yourself spiritually. So, so somehow, you will have to pay. Life will require you to pay. Is that how you pay now or you pay later? But the best part of life, really, success is about paying now so that you enjoy later. You pay the price now and then get the benefit. There is nothing like, I pay later or I buy in credit. You don't buy success in credit. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You have to pay the price now. Solomon, like the example, you know, example is cited. Solomon then become the, the richest and wealthiest man that ever lived accidentally. There was something he did that qualified him for that. He did what no one else had ever done. Only one bond offering was required to be offered by the king. Solomon didn't offer one bond offering. He offered one. He offered a second. The same day, a third, a fourth, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. For what? He was required to offer just one. Fifty, sixty, hundred. People around him would have been looking at him like one fool. Two hundred, three hundred, the same day. 400, 500, the same day. Even from a fiscal point of view, of view, that was exhausting. Am I correct? Exhausting. Exhausting. Mentally, physically, emotionally, that was exhausting. 600, 700, 800, 900, 950, 960, 970, 980, 990, 995, 996, 997, 998, 999, 8,000 bond offering. For what God only required him to offer one. That guy, like I said two weeks ago, he was mad, really. And then God couldn't hold back. God, God came to him that same night, the same night, not the following week, not two weeks later. He said, Solo, what do you want? <laughs> what, what, what do you want? And then the guy again surprised God as it were. He said, God, just give me wisdom to lead well, to do what you have called me to do properly. And God said, you didn't ask for wealth. You didn't ask for fame. You didn't ask for the life of your enemy. You didn't say I should let them fall down and... 
He said, I'm going to give you what you asked for, but I'm going to give you more than that. I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. You know, God was obligated to give him wealth, even though he didn't ask for wealth. Because there is a law that God himself established in Genesis 1, that every seed must produce after its kind. So Solomon offered material sacrifice. What he was asking for was immaterial wisdom. God was obligated to give him that and to give him the material harvest because it was a material sacrifice. So I'm going to make you so rich. Nobody will ever be compared with you in history. And that's what happened. You see, nothing just happens. Oh yes, nothing just happens. And, and you see, life isn't about what you do once in a while. What you do daily is what you become permanently. You have to form a habit. It's a habit that produces result. It could be positive or negative result. So don't come around and say, Pastor, um, I fasted. And you told us to fast. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I fasted that day and nothing happened. Hello? Make fasting a lifestyle. Oh, you told us to give and I gave. And, and it's not about you told us to give. It's what you do consistently. That's why the Bible says, listen, pay attention. It said, if the cloud be full of rain, they empty themselves. So the cloud has to be full of rain before it empties. It has to be full. So it's not something that happens just once. It has to be full of rain. It has to keep gathering, accumulating. And then when it gets to the crescendo, the next thing is it empties. That's when harvest comes. It's not something you do once in a while. Your, the cloud has to be full of rain. So if you're not getting results, stay on it. Stay on it. Keep at it. Regardless of what it is you're doing. Stay on it. Keep at it. One day you wake up, you see the results. And once the results start coming, it will keep coming. As long as you continue on that path. Once it starts coming, it will keep coming. Remember Elijah. He sent out his servant to go and watch for the sign. The servant came back and said, first of all, he came back and said, I see nothing. And after a while, he said, I see a cloud like the feast of a man. And then at the seventh time, he came back and said, everywhere is thick and dark. There is about to be an abundance of rain. It's not something that happened once just because, you, you know, you practice the principle of the law once. You have to make the principle a lifestyle for it to produce for you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So we said that sacrifice is the art of giving us something of value for something of greater value. And that is applicable in all areas of your life, maritally, financially, physically, spiritually, and otherwise, right? Including your career and your academics. In the first service, I, I talked about the fact that, you know, sometimes the reason many of us are resisted by God and man is because of our inability to stoop to conquer. That's also sacrifice. Remember the test for this series is from Philippians chapter 2, where the Bible says that Jesus made himself of no reputation. He stripped himself of his right and privileges as God and became like a man. That in itself is sacrifice. It's not only what he did on the cross, but the fact that he stripped himself. So sometimes you have to strip yourself of all your ego titles and ETC and humble yourself before you can lay hold on whatever it is that God has for you. 
Sometimes you have to let go of those things you are clinging on to. Oh, it's my right. This is my right. I'm not going to, you know. And then there's a slogan. No grief for anybody, right? Yeah. No grief. That no grief will put more people in trouble this year than any other thing. Don't just follow any of any, you know. Those are strange cultures. Except you decide to apply it positively yourself. So you can say, no grief for the devil. No grief for laziness. Yes. No grief for distraction. You can apply it in that context. But not in the context, those out there are applying it. No grief for anybody. Doesn't make any sense. Go to your boss, say no grief for anybody. <laughs> Next day you're on the street. Oh, yes. Praise the name of Jesus. You have to stoop to conquer. You have to stoop to conquer. You have to stoop to conquer. And so, sometimes stooping may make you look like a fool. But it's okay. It's not what people think of you that matters. It's who you really are that matters. We gave so many examples that laws are parallel. That they walk in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. For instance, the law of seed time and harvest works anywhere. Right? Gravity works regardless of who you are. Whether you are a preacher or an evil priest. Gravity will act on you, right? So the law of sacrifice also holds true regardless of the kingdom. I gave a couple of examples. I even mentioned certain names in the um, industry, entertainment industry, people who confess to making sacrifices to rise to where they got to. Politicians are involved, um, businessmen, renowned, accomplished, very well-known business people are involved, the sacrifice of human. And it's becoming so rampant today that years back, it used to be things that happened in December, festive period. Festive period, but it's happening literally every single day right now. And I think it's because of the economic condition in the land. I saw a video a few days ago, somebody was confessing uh, and they were asking him, so how many people have you killed? Um, say he has lost count. Okay, so what do you use them for? He says, well, yeah, he has different clients. So some come, they request for head, so he gives them head. Some come, they request for wrist or legs, and he gives them, what do those people use them for? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The sacrifice for power, to get power, to get prosperity in quotes, to get protection, to get fame, and so on and so forth. To get favor. All kinds of sacrifices. And what I don't realize is that someday, sometime, in order to maintain that altar, Satan is going to make demand on people who are closest to them. So the next time is bring your mom or bring your daughter. That's when it becomes clear. Then they will not start running to pastors. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we are basically just recapping today. And then I talked about Abel and Cain. Abel made a sacrifice that God accepted, but Cain's sacrifice was rejected. Why? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 4 and 5, that Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. And the word excellent there, like I've mentioned repeatedly in Greek, is the Greek word pleion, which means um, greater in quantity and in quality. That's what happened. And that's why God accepted his own sacrifice and rejected the sacrifice of Cain. So it's not like God looked at them and said, I prefer Abel to Cain. No, it's not about preference. It's about what they offered. 
what they offered. Hallelujah. And then we looked at Abraham. Abraham was a man that God picked from idolatry and decided to bless him. God pronounced a blessing on Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and said, In blessing, I will bless you, multiply, and I will multiply. That was a promise. Fast forward a couple of years later, God now said to him, Give me your son. And in case he was confused about it, God specified, Your son, whom you love. In other words, give me Isaac, not just any son, and offer him to me as a bond offering. What God was saying, in case you don't know, is you take Isaac to the altar, you cut off his head, right? You kill him and then pour fear on him and roast him. So Abraham had that picture in mind when he took Isaac on that journey. How many of you can take your sons on that kind of journey? You see, no one is raising hand now. Even when God asks you to. Huh? You know go ask. How you take no say no go ask? <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. God may not ask, He won't ask of that kind of sacrifice now. But the principle is still the same today. He will ask of you something that really means so much to you. When that time comes, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? When that time comes, what are you going to do? I, I was speaking to someone some weeks back, and I said to her, I said, listen, you're having a party, you're having a birthday party, and you are going to be, you know, I mean, alcohol and all that will be served in your party. And you are a leader. He said, no, it's, it's not me. Pastor, it's my husband. I said, well, whose party is it? And I said to her, if you can make that little sacrifice, what if God now makes a bigger demand on you? Something, a demand that is waste money, because that's really nothing. He said, Pastor, but you know I don't take, I know you don't. But, but you are going to gather people, right? And whatever they see there is who you are. And that's basically what you represent. Right? Especially as a leader. So I see you as a leader. In your birthday, you know, it's um, people are, uh, you know, so what does that mean there? Uh, so I, I see angels. <laughs> okay. Okay. So they are, as far as they are concerned, you are a representative of your church. So in their minds, that's what they do there. All because you can't say no. I say, so how can God trust you with more? The closer you walk with God, the more you give up certain things. Sometimes some things may not be seen in itself. That's why Paul said all things are lawful but not all things are expedient. Some things may not be seen in itself, but because it has certain appearance, and because of who you are. And I told her a story. Let me not. I was going to tell that story, but it's not for public. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. Esau was the firstborn, Jacob the second. Esau had the opportunity to consolidate his position, but he, he laid it down. Why? Because he could not um, delay gratification. He sacrifices tomorrow for today. Jacob sacrifices today for tomorrow. And the Bible says in Hebrews, Chapter 12, verse 16 and 17, describing the sorry story of Esau. He said, watch out for the Esau syndrome. Trading away God's lifelong gift 
in order to satisfy a short-term appetite. You well know how Esau later regretted that impulsive act and wanted God's blessing, but by then it was too late. Tears or no tears. Tears or no tears, it was too late. Why? He wanted it and he wanted it now. And then because he wanted it now and he had to get it now, he sacrificed something of greater value. When the time came, he realized the cost. His tears could not reverse what happened. Don't you ever make that mistake. Your destiny is too precious, too big, too wide for you to sacrifice it at the altar of comfort, convenience, or self-indulgence. In order to go up, there are certain things you must give up. That is the core of the message. No cross, no crown. There are certain things you must give up now. There are certain conveniences you must give up now. Certain level of comfort you must give up now. There are certain commitment you must give up now. Certain relationships you have to cut off from now. Certain opportunities you have to lay down now. Remember Reuben. Reuben again missed his place as a first son. Instead, he received a curse from, from Jacob. Was it Jacob? Yeah. Jacob. Why? Because he could not delay gratification. Let me not go there. Jacob said, because you defy my bed, you slept with my wife. So you will no longer be the first son. And the first son in Israel had so much blessings conferred on him. Esau lost it because he couldn't delay gratification. Couldn't make the sacrifice. Joseph made the sacrifice. Potiphar's wife said, Have me and have everything. Joseph said, I will not. And let me tell you something don't kid yourself. His flesh may have wanted it. His flesh may have wanted it. But, but his destiny was too precious to him for him to gratify his flesh and sacrifice his future. He abandoned it, laid it down, even though it cost him so much, two years in prison, or even much more than two years actually, because, you know, um, calculated it was more than two years in prison. At the end of the day, God honored him with the place or the role of a prime minister in the most powerful nation at that time. Why? He made the sacrifice. Whatever you give up right now, there's always a benefit tomorrow. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, give up to go up. Hallelujah. Okay, um... I mentioned that you, you sacrifice for relationships, sacrifice for health, sacrifice for your spiritual intensity and intimacy with God, and you know, for whatever it is, your career. There are things you have to lay down. Now, your spiritual intensity and intimacy will require seasons of fasting and prayer. Those are part of the sacrifice you make. Seasons of fasting and prayer. And then you make out time, you know, on a daily basis for study of the word, your quiet time. You pray. In case you don't know what to pray about, pray about souls. Pray for the nation. Pray for your pastor. Pray for, you know, the program, the projects in church and all that. All those seasons of praying and waiting on God and spending time with God, you are making spiritual deposits. 
Nobody does develop muscles accidentally. Nobody becomes strong accidentally. Strength is intentional, is deliberate. It's what you build into yourself, both physical and spiritual strength. And so these are the things you do when you want to develop spiritually. In the area of your health, what are the things you need to do? There are some kind of food you may have grown up with and loved very dearly. You have to lay them down. Good health is not accidental also. Or somebody may say, but I, I, have, I, have, I have divine health. Okay, you are not the only one who has divine health. And there are many people who have divine health right now in the hospital. Because they have divine wealth but no divine wisdom. It takes divine wisdom to sustain divine health. There are certain things you have to stop, cut off from, especially at a certain age. Your daily routine is also important. Your daily activities, your exercises. I mean, yesterday after a whole day of preparation and ATC, I went to cut my hair. Um, this was about um, 9 p.m. or so. I still had to exercise. I still had to work out. I still had to jog and all that. Why? To keep fit. Do I declare scripture and confess God's word over my health steadily and regularly? The life of God flows through me. I'm a partaker of God's divine nature. Now, after doing all that, I also have to do the physical needful. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I was talking with um, my son and husband. We we're talking about his health thing. And, you know, their eating habits and all that is remarkable. Do they look like grandparents? Not at all. I'm tempted to... to, to, to Tell them that your 64th birthday was a few days ago. I, I'm, I was tempted to. I didn't know I'd said it before. <laughs> I mean, but it's not an accident. It's not an accident. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I mean, the, before they came, my wife had cooked the four pots of soup. Only to discover that that's old syllabus. I'm telling you, old syllabus. Fruit, this fruit, this that fruit, that fruit. Say shoe. <laughs> Me too, I can't begin to chop fruit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nothing just happens. Yeah. So, those are things you need to do for your health. Your relationship, sacrifice for your relationship. Part of the sacrifice you have to make for a relationship is to make time. Relationship dies in the absence of time. Relationship dies in the absence of time. Whatever you feed grows. What you stop feeding dies. It's a natural law. Natural law. Make time to communicate. Make time to prioritize those who are important in your life. If you're, if you're married or you're, you know, you're going out, your fiancés and all that, there's nothing wrong with going to the movies once in a while. What a clean movie. Create opportunities to, to bond. 
Spend time with your children. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Spend time with those who matter most to you. Because if you lose those meaningful relationships, you become vulnerable. Become vulnerable. It's like a city without walls. And sometimes we make time, and this is a mistake, you know, pastors used to make in years past. The older generation pastors especially. They make time for everybody else, but they don't make time for their family. Don't make that mistake. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Part of the sacrifice you have to make also, I was telling somebody a few days ago, is to shut up. Yeah, in a relationship. Sometimes you have to shut up. It's not everything you say. It's not everything that itches you. you. I was telling someone about two weeks ago or so. I said, listen. I mean, if you, if you complain about everything that your spouse does, there's just no way you are going to miraculously have a healthy marriage. There's just no way. Miraculously, you just, your marriage just become healthy. No. There are sometimes you just have to shut up, ignore, make excuses so that you can have your sanity. Otherwise, you just be going on the street and, <laughs> and people are wondering what's happening. Not knowing it's carryover from home. And, what's, and Satan is just playing game on your mind. You are calculating. Yeah. You are talking in your mind, but you don't know you are gesticulating. I, I, I told that too. I told, what I told that. It's not necessary. It's not worth it. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Those are part of the sacrifice you have to make. Shut up. Make excuses. Understand that you are dealing with somebody just like you. Meaning somebody that has weaknesses like you have weaknesses. May not be in the same area. Are you here? It, it may not be in the same area. And sometimes we judge others from a, a, a point of view of strength. And so we assess them and we categorize them and label them, forgetting that they are also strong where we are weak. And we expect them to be kind to us in our area of weakness, but we are intolerant with their own weaknesses. Amazing. Praise the name of Jesus. Sacrifice in the area of wealth, career. From a point of view, from a spiritual point of view, the fundamental sacrifice you have to make includes you have to be consistent with your giving. Scriptures cannot be broken. You have to be consistent with your giving. You have to go beyond giving to sacrificing. Learn the art of sacrificing. Let it become one with you. Let it become a habit. Let it become a lifestyle. Sacrificing. People have sacrificed all kinds of things. I've made some, I mean, I've, you've heard my story again and again and again and again and again. God has brought me to a point where there is nothing too important, too valuable for me, you know, to hold on when I know I should let it go. Absolutely nothing. There's no, nothing I can't give up. Nothing. Materially, there's nothing I cannot part with. 
Nothing. And your heart has to be that circumcised before you are prepared for God's abundance. When God can trust you and count on you that regardless of what he gives you, you won't hold it back when he places demand on it. But if God cannot count on you to that point, there are certain levels of wealth you cannot touch. Because there are certain levels of wealth that you can't get by sweat and struggle alone. Go and ask those of them out there in the world they understand it. Including some of the billionaires out there. There's hardly any billionaire who is not deeply spiritual. There's, there's none across the world. I'm not just talking about Africa. They are either spiritual in terms of their roots in God. I mean deeply rooted in God. Or in the other world. Belonging to one cult or the other. Name one billionaire in America that does not belong to a cult. You can hardly find any. You can hardly find any. I had to do personal research on this. Some of them are priests in those places. Freemasons, cult and bones, Illuminati, and the rest of them. Why? There are certain level of wealth that only a higher power can confer on you. So, so you must understand this foundation. And then we now begin to talk about hard work. That's where hard work now begins to count. But without this, hard work in itself alone doesn't count for so much. It may bring some result, but limited result. That's where the principle of networking begins to count. Your ability to network with people, your ability to read and discern trends and prepare yourself ahead so you are not overtaking and then you don't wake up one day your skill set are outdated no longer required like the example I gave in the second service praise the name of Jesus